Her stats speak for themselves. A career 1,000-point scorer, TD Bank Classic MVP, American East Championship Most Outstanding Player, Spokeswoman, the pride of Greenwood, Indiana, number 23 on your scorecard, and number one in the hearts of UVM women's hoops fans, Emma Utterback. March Madness is here, and we are here for it. Good afternoon, and welcome to Across the Fence. I'm Jolie Whitney. Our guest today has thrilled Uni University of Vermont women's basketball fans since she stepped on campus five years ago. This season, Emma Utterback started all 32 games for Vermont and registered career bests in leading in the team with 14 points and 4.2 assists per game. Emma, thank you for joining us on Across the Fence. Thank you so much for having me. And before we get started diving a little bit into your career, can you tell me about how you thought this year's been going so far? I feel like it's been a really a really outstanding season. I feel like we've had some highs and lows that we've really had to work through, but ultimately I feel like we have pushed through a lot of adversity and I think, I mean, hopefully we come out on top, but I think it's been a good year. And talking about coming out on top, the final four women's games for the NAACP are played in Cleveland, Ohio. Is mm -hmm. that somewhere you've been before? Yeah, yeah. I've been there a couple times um, for some basketball tournaments, um, some visits, but yeah, I've been around. All right, and actually our producer telling me it's NC2A, is that right? Oh, NCAA. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to <laughs> I get it wrong this whole time. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> you're good. I'm not the biggest basketball fan, but I'm very excited to talk with you today. Awesome. <laughs> um, so you've been at UVM for five years. What are you going to miss most as you head on? Oh, gosh, just the people, um, the family that I've created. It's really become a second home for me here, and so I feel like my coaches, my teammates, the, the community, the fan base that I've been with for five years, that is going to be the thing that I miss the most for sure. And you were ranked 103rd going out of high school for basketball. What made UVM the right choice for you? So UVM was actually my first official visit. And um, right after I left campus, I told my parents I wanted to commit. And it's ultimately the reasons why I'm going to miss UVM the most, which is the people, um, just the family atmosphere that I felt the moment that I stepped on campus. It's a beautiful area, very different from Indiana a little bit, um, with the mountains and the water. Um, and then, I mean, it's a great academic school. So getting the, you know, the academic academics that I'm really looking for, which was public communications, and I felt like it was ultimately the right choice for me at the end of the day. And talking about those academics, you're a graduate student now. What are you studying? I um, graduated my bachelor's in public communications with a specialization in media and journalism, and currently I am studying to get my master's in public administration. And what do you want to do with that after school? So for me, I think looking at policies within sports media, um, kind of NIL based, um, but really just looking at policies throughout NCAA, um, pro basketball, I feel like that's kind of where my passions lie. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing yet, but I think I want to kind of stay in that little niche. Okay, and you mentioned NIL, which stands for Name Image Likeness, mm -hmm. um, and that was a big thing in 2021, I believe, when the NCAA passed that, mm -hmm. um, allowing students or student athletes to use their name, image, and likeness for mm -hmm. branding. What does that mean for you as a student athlete? I mean, it means a lot. The, the ability to kind of benefit off of that was huge, and it's open me up to so many opportunities to give back to the community and um, be a big part of the younger generation of female athletes. Um, I've really taken it upon myself. I've been doing clinics with um, a local training program called Duncan Hoops. And um, just being able to use NIL to even give me that idea to do something like that is really, really cool. Um, throwing clinics together with my teammate Delaney um, about once a month has been really, really fun. Um, and it's, a bit, it's allowed me to kind of make this place feel like a second home because I'm really getting closer with a lot of people in the area. What do you think the importance of having a brand is now in college athletics? I think it's huge, and I also think it sets you up for your future. Um, I think we're all kind of building up a resume, building up our brand um, to help us after college. Um, so whatever we do during this time I think is very crucial. And I think for me, wanting to be in sports media, doing things like NIL is really helping me uh, and setting me up for my future. And is that branding something that you're doing on your own? Do you work with an agent? Do you have any help with that, or is it all, all you? So currently I am signed with an agent, um, his name is Byron, and um, I met with him I would say probably a little over a month ago just to help me out with my second half of my season and he's gotten me some really cool opportunities and he's also planning on helping me after college as well knowing that sports media is something I do want to dive into. Um, so I'm really excited for that, he's a great person and it's, a, it's more of a starter up kind of company, um, but I'm really excited, I think it's going to go some great places. 
So you have a pretty big social media following, but do you think brand is more important with what you're, what you're doing off the court or what you're doing in the games? Oh, I think honestly in the games, it's really just the, the game speaks for itself. I think off the court, building that brand um, and just the way you treat people and the relationships you build with people, I think is really the most important. Um, so yeah, I feel like on the court, it's obviously nice to know, oh, she's doing this off the court and it's kind of something, a cool talking point, whatever. But um, at the end of the day, when, when, the, when the ball goes up in the air, it's really just between those inside those lines so um, yeah all right and you actually posted on your Instagram recently a uh, pre-game makeup tutorial yeah and is that something that you do is it superstitious or is it building on that brand or is it just a preference for you honestly it's a huge superstition um, I started it in high school actually and there were a couple games where I didn't do my makeup and I didn't play exactly the way I wanted to and so I told myself I was like this is gonna be my superstition from now on it's also a preference you know you have the cameras and everything so being a little bit more dolled up is is not bad for me. I would <laughs> appreciate that. So, um, so yeah, I would say that's pretty much it. And do you think it works as a superstition? Has it been? I guess so. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, it's gotten me here. So <laughs> better than to not wear it and find out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and um, Caitlin Clark of Iowa has been really big in the news now for breaking tons of records. Do you think that's brought more attention to women's basketball in general? Oh my gosh, 100%. I mean, you're seeing all of these numbers on social media where um, a game that she's going to, an away game, they're selling out the entire arenas and that's stuff in women's basketball that hasn't been done in a very long time. And like throughout college basketball, not just one specific team, you have Angel Reese. Um, she's been really making a name for herself at LSU. And I think it's been huge for women's basketball because the, the TV sales, um, the ticket sales, um, it's all been increasing at a crazy rate. Um, it's really impressive to watch. And actually I saw her in our Florida Gulf Coast tournament in November, she, oh, I, oh, Iowa was playing there, and um, it was really cool to see her in person, and just the things that she's done for the sport, and now everybody's watching it, everybody wants to know what the buzz is about, it's really huge, and I'm glad that I'm playing during a time where this is happening. Have you felt that increased interest at UVM as well? 100%, and I don't know if it's directly correlated with Caitlin Clark and kind of the buzz that's been happening with like the higher major schools, um, but I will say I think as our program has grown throughout the years, we've seen that increased support and obviously you have those people that from the beginning they've always been there but the new faces have been really nice to see them in the stands absolutely it also helps that you guys are doing very well exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah for sure and of course it's not just you out on the on the in the court excuse me mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about the the team dynamic you guys have oh yeah I mean it's really like I've been saying a family atmosphere it's a bunch of sisters um, on that court together and I think you know whenever someone's down or having a bad day I think we all know all know each other really well and have a do a good job at making each other feel better and picking each other up um, I think that we all go to a sports psychologist, um, our team sports psychologist, so we're able to kind of talk about our feelings and so everybody knows what each other needs to the person next to them to be the best version of themselves and so I think doing that it's really created this amazing bond between all of us. We spoke about this a little bit before the taping, but yeah. that sports psychologist, is it like couples counseling? Like what's the topic of that? And do a lot of schools have those programs? So I would say um, if there's the budget for it, um, it's a big, big emphasis. I think that sports programs are wanting to have is the mental side of the game. I think that you can practice as much as you want on the physical end, but if your mind isn't right, then it's all going to go down the gutter. So um, I think for us, we use sports psychology to really prepare us for the performance anxieties, um, the stressors that we might feel during the game and how do we combat that and how do we push through that adversity. And um, also just understanding like the struggles that a teammate's going through and hearing that and it, maybe we forget to ask. So that coming up in a sports psychologist meeting is really nice. Um, it's allowed all of us to be more in tune with each other's like mental side and what we need on the court, off the court, as a teammate, as a friend. Um, so I feel like it's been really beneficial for our team. Absolutely. And what would your advice be to somebody in high school who's maybe looking to play college basketball? I think work ethic is huge, um, but never forgetting why you are playing in the first place. I think that college basketball especially is a very, very long season. It's a little five months, maybe a little bit more or less, depending on how you do. But it's a very long, hard season. And then in postseason, preseason, in the summer, you're constantly playing. Um, so it's really a grind for four or five years. Um, so I think really just 
finding that passion and keeping it even when the times are tough and then keeping that work ethic and just playing for the person next to you, I think is a, a big piece of advice I would give. And you mentioned having a preseason, a postseason, and then during, how does your training and, and you said you play all year, what does that schedule yeah. look like? Yeah, it's, it's a really long year. Um, we really don't get many breaks. I would say we get the five days off on Christmas break. Um, there's a couple like weekends here and there during the year that we get off before season starts. Um, and then summer is like the kind of the biggest break that we have, but you're really trying to prepare for the summer session as well. Um, so it's always playing and it's a lot on the body, but I think that always being go, 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 your body's kind of prepared and used to it. So um, yeah, it's a lot, but I think my body's going to appreciate the break after the five years. Absolutely. So yeah. are you planning to take a break after after you graduate? So as of right now, yes. If something else were to come up, um, then I think that would be a different answer. But sure. as of right now, I think yes. Yeah, we won't hold you to anything. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> and do you have any fond memories coming? I'm sure you have plenty, but is there any one that comes to mind from your time playing at UVM? 100% winning the America East Championship last year and then going on to March Madness um, playing UConn playing against Gino Ariema he is a coach that I grew up watching and admiring he's done so much for the UConn program um, but really the number one was just being on my home court with my teammates and my coaches where we spent so much time practicing envisioning that future and it really coming to fruition and seeing just like my family in the stands them rushing down to hug me it is like a very surreal experience that not many people get to experience and so I'm very lucky that I did. What's March Madness like? Did it live up to your expectations? Oh my gosh yeah it was the coolest experience just the the hype around it um, just the media presence um, the recognition the the selection Sunday like all all of that I grew up watching and so being able to be a part of that was so huge and it felt surreal the entire time I was like I had to pinch myself I was like is this even real um, so yeah it was really cool and you've been a catamount for five years now and before your last big dance so to speak mm -hmm. do you have any words to the fans oh gosh big words uh, just I'm so so grateful for the love and support that I've been given these whole five years, um, I think coming from a place so far away, not being able to go home very often, the ability to just make someone feel so at home when they're so far away from home is such a special feeling that not many people, people get to experience. And I'm just so lucky that I got that experience. Um, to my teammates and my coaches, I just want to say thank you so much for just believing in me for five years on the good days and on the bad days um, and just loving me throughout all those those moments. And I'm going to miss it, Vermont, so much. I will be back all the time. Um, whenever I can come back, I will be. Um, so, yeah, I love this place. I love the people, and I'm going to miss everyone a lot. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. That wraps up our program for today. From the crew behind the scenes here at WCAX, I'm Jolay Whitney. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.